Hello everybody and welcome to your 36th chapter in your Java EU7 tutorial series. In this chapter, we'll discuss how to implement asynchronous business methods in session beans and call them from enterprise bean clients. So usually when a client and a server communicates with each other, the client first sends a request and the server sends back a response. This method works for most of our needs, but can have one major drawback. When the server has to compute a very large and long running process before sending their response back to the client. This is a huge issue for our client because it can't send any more requests to the server before this response is sent back. Basically, the client over here does not have any control. With asynchronous method invocation, you can give control back to the client. If this server's thread is stuck on a program called a blocking operation, it can switch this to another thread so it can quickly get back to the client, thus granting back control so the client can send more requests. This increases application response time overall and makes the user experience much better. So now that you get that, let's take a look into an example. Inside our NetBeans, let's go ahead, right click and open project. Go ahead and click async and make sure that this open required projects box is checked. Go ahead and open a project. So this example demonstrates how to define an asynchronous business method on a session bean and call it from a web client. The first thing that we want to take a look at is our stateless session bean, our mailer bean. If you see here inside your modules where there's async war and async SMTPD. If you double click both of these, these two will pop up. If you open this guy up, war, and go into your source packages, you will see your mailer bean. So this mailer bean is simply a session stateless bean. This defines an asynchronous method called send message. If you go down here and you see there's a send message uh, method with the a at asynchronous annotation which uses the Java mail API to send an email to a specified email address. Now you can take a look at these web pages too. These are just a few faceless pages, but they're really simple. Um, so now that you got that, let's go ahead and take a look at what we got to do. So first of all, what, what you want to do is you want to uh, right click this async uh, SMTPD project and select run. This SMTP server si simulator starts accepting connections. The async SMPTD output tab shows the following message. So you can see that the test SMTP server listening on port 3025. Now next, what you got to do is right click your war and then go ahead and click build. So this command configures the Java mail resource using a Glassfish server administrative cons uh, command and builds packages and deploys the async war module. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and right click and run this guy. So with this deployed, you can see right here that we can send an email to any specified email you wish. Let's go ahead and put in my email viprov programming at gmail.com. Send the email. And now what it's doing is since this email is taking a long time for it to process, what it did is it just put like a thread onto this um, process and then sent back the response, allowing us to uh, like modify anything else. We can go ahead and refresh it again. And so you can see that it's been sent already. If we go into our NetBeans and go into our output, you can now check your run async war. And you can now see that, uh, inside your run, you have a test message from your Java mail, which has, which is from this server, right? And then it's to this email. And the message ID is that the subject is a test message. And what's inside the message is this is a test message from the async example of the Java EA tutorial. It was sent on this date at this time. So that is literally how, um, like how asynchronous um, like how asynchronous methods work. What they do is they substitute, uh, like a thread with another thread so that this process can continue running in the background and you can keep on doing your stuff inside your web page. 
Now back in here, um, let's go ahead and like try to clean up some stuff. What you want to do is you want to press this X button to stop this uh, from running. Then you can go ahead and delete the Java Mail session resource. Go into your services, open this up and go into your resources. Inside here, you will see Java Mail sessions. Open that up and you'll see my example session. Right click and unregister. And that wraps it up for today's tutorial, everybody. This chapter, once again, it discussed how to implement asynchronous business methods in session beans and calling them from enterprise bean clients. So you now saw how we can replace these long, like these huge and long running processes and then sending the re request to the client so the client doesn't have to wait for your um, process to be processed and uh, he can keep on doing whatever it's uh, he's doing inside your website. All right, so that wraps it up for this entire part on enterprise beans. The next part we'll be talking about persistence and how to introduce how to introduce like um, putting in data inside your database and reading data from your database. But until then, I will see you in the next video.